Failure and nothing else. That's not a great name. <laughs> I'm not raining on your parade. That's a metaphor. What I'm actually doing <laughs> is criticizing your ideas. It's taken us almost 12 months to get here. The cool thing about the future is nobody has expertise. So it really falls in the hands of people who think they have expertise. <laughs> and that's where you come and in. And I really think I do. We want to entertain. We want to inform. But we want to entertain. I feel like we're trying to establish the rapport, the chemistry, the feel, the tone, you know. We've only known each other nine years, so we need to establish it here. Welcome to Data Science Storytime, a show about data, science, stories, and time. I'm Kevin, storyteller at Keen.io. And I'm Kyle, co-founder and CEO at Keen.io. Data Science Storytime is brought to you by Heavybit, a program dedicated to helping startups take their developer products to market. For more information, visit heavybit.com. If you're interested in being a guest or have a story you'd like to share, you can reach us on Twitter at DSStoryTime or join us on Slack at slack.keen.io. So here we are in the room. Finally, the dream is coming true. We are in front of microphones. All we're lacking right now is a name, a concept, and a plan. A reason for even being here. A reason for even being here. Even except a that we enjoy each other's company and Ted has been kind enough to let us use the studio. Yeah, that's all we got. So you and I had a conversation last year about failure. It went so well. I thought it'd be awesome if we could spin this up into something more than just us sitting at a bar recording things on an iPhone. And that's the journey. It's taken us almost 12 months to get here, from the bar to this room. Wow. Yeah. It's been a little while. So is your idea that we talk about failure here? Is that no? I mean, I think we should talk about a lot of things. We always end up talking about failure. I don't think we. (laughs) I don't think the podcast should be like failure. And nothing else. Failure and nothing else. That's not a great name. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of a great name. Failure and nothing else with Kevin <laughs> Uh Not like failure is a step in innovation. Not failure. No. And then end scene. <laughs> right, exactly. If, if ever it starts to warm up, then we have to cut immediately so that it can fail. Um, so let's start with just some of the podcast names. Maybe that will help us riff on things. The name that we came up with accidentally the other day was Science and History for Grown Up Smart Kids. That's really good. So, so what would a podcast called Science and History? First of all, what's the acronym? S A H F G U S K. SAF Gusk. No, SAF Gusk. SAF Gusk. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, get that's some that's something. Yes, yeah, that's I mean, it's, no, it is pronounceable. It is, and not every acronym is. Science and history for grown up smart kids. What would the so? Let's imagine. Okay, that's that's. I'm just go, scrolling through iTunes. Right. And I'm like, ah, what podcast should I? You know, I'm he- checking out. You know, the the library. What <laughs> what podcast? Should, oh, this one, science and history for grown up smart kids. I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to that podcast because. It evokes a sense that it might have X content in it. What would be the? What, what am I expecting when uh, I hear that? Well, uh, not what are you expecting? Just like the re- the reader. What, the the reader is the expecting. Listener. I think there's a certain degree of nerdery that that comes through from that. I feel like I might learn about stegosauruses. I might learn about the Magna Carta. It would mostly be stegosauruses and the Magna Carta. I think. Yeah. Uh, I um, mean, maybe like ten episodes each. Right. And then, <laughs> Triceratops doesn't warrant nearly as much. No, um, and I like that the audience is in the title. I do like that. Yeah, who's it for? Oh, it's, it's oh, it's for grown up smart kids. It says right there. Well, I'm a grown up smart kid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it has grown up and kid. It's that sort of paradox, aren't we all? So, are there topics beyond? I mean, it's hard to imagine, but let's just push the envelope. Are there topics beyond Stegosauruses and the Magna Carta that we might want to talk about over the fullness of time? Science and history is interesting. One of my favorite subjects has always been the history of science. I really like, like I'm reading this book right now, The Innovators, about the creation of the digital age, starting from like the 1800s to, so it's like Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage figuring out machine, mechanical computing contraptions all the way through like Steve Jobs. It's pretty cool. So the history of science is a whole, there's a rich area where it's clearly about science and history. Famous discoveries. Famous you now discoveries. That's getting onto something too that we've talked about a lot. I mean, we, we you have a certain degree of expertise in the arena of entrepreneurship and startups, and it is accurate to say a certain degree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I guess degree. we all have a certain degree. <laughs> uh, I mean, there is a measurable amount. It's true. Entrepreneurship seems to be pretty popular these days. <laughs> it could be thinking cynically about our podcast and how do we get it to traction and how do we make it into the thing that drives all of our Twitter followers. <laughs> Thinking cynically, eh, there's something to that. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like if we're looking at the Venn diagram of what we want to do here, I feel like in one circle we have shit we like to talk about. And then in another circle, shit that people would be interested in. And mm-hmm. and then maybe there's a third circle, which is things that we have some degree of expertise in. So things we like to talk about, things we have some expertise in, things other people might want to hear us talk about. Well, what about the things we like to talk about that we have no expertise in? Is that is there stuff that, is there stuff there? There's a lot yeah, of yeah, stuff probably, there. That's probably most <laughs> I mean, of that's it, huh? too big for one podcast. Well, because there's expertise, perceived expertise, expertise we perceive that we have, and other people don't. There's expertise that other people may perceive we have that we don't perceive we have, and then somewhere there's like the true expertise that we have, right? Right. How do we shore all that up? You don't want to have too much expertise. Nobody wants to hear, you know, a know-it-all talk. So that's true. Like the I learn the best from people who just learned something. Right. They just learned it, so they remember when they didn't know it, so they can tell me. As someone who doesn't know it, how to, how they learned it, right? Yeah. You ask that same person ten years later, they're like, I don't know how I learned it. It's obvious. Yours obvious. You just know it. You either know it or you don't know it. Novices are the best teachers, right? And so that's sort of why I feel like the areas in which we have just enough expertise is probably the sweet spot. So how about shit I learned last week? Is that a good podcast? It, it could be shit I learned last week. Sure. I mean, shit I learned last year would be silly. Would be the acronym for that. That's not too bad. Should I, learn Should I learn last year? <laughs> but it sounds kind of dated, doesn't it? It's like, let's see, last year. Geez, I, I don't even. I mean, you are. I mean, for I've somebody, for somebody it. like you who describes yourself as a futurist, <laughs> you know, it, it is a little counterintuitive. But <laughs> Should I learned last year. <laughs> That's no good. So back to the Venn diagram, though. Yeah, the Venn diagram. And you said things that I have expertise in, and things I like to talk about, and things I that things, people that people might want to listen to. Right. So I've got my three circles on that. You've got your three circles. Future guests have their three right. circles. What's the overlap of all those? Can I throw some things into the pot? I know, as somebody who's talked to you a lot, that you get very excited when you talk about what you think about the future of business, what you think about the company that you started, why you think there are better ways to do things than the way people do them now. I like talking to you about that. Yeah, stuff. I like to talk about that stuff. Yeah, you do. I don't know if people like listening to it. <laughs> I like it. And the cool thing about the future is nobody's, nobody has expertise. So it really falls in the hands of people who think they have expertise. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you come and in. I really think I do. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> so, so maybe, yeah, maybe really it's not shit you learned last year, but uh, shit, now I need a, a better acronym. I mean, I still feel like we mastered the acronym with whatever the, the one that ended with GUSK. But I like GUSK. <laughs> Elon the, GUSK. The future for grown up smart kids. You know, I mean, that, that, could be, that could be something, but that would be f- GUSK. I always wanted to write a book called The Future of History. Why? I don't know. I just like the name of okay, it. Okay, when you said you. <laughs> I wanted to write a book I'm called that for years. I don't even know there. what it is. I'm going to push you there. When you say you've always wanted to write a book called The Future of History, like define always. When did. Maybe two, three years. Since I decided I wanted to write a book someday that was not a fiction book, I got all kinds of weird sci fi shit. So you like, define always as two or three years ago? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. That's a futurist for you. I guess I don't really. Yeah, but now that you say it, I guess I don't. But apparently that's what I mean when I say it. For a while now, I've. <laughs> how about this? For a while now, I've wanted to write a book. Called the future of history, and then fill in the details of what that means later. I like to name things. <laughs> okay, so the <laughs> the book right now has a cover and it has a title on it by Kyle Wilde, but the page is it doesn't even have a cover. I mean, I don't know what the. I mean, presumably it would have a cover. Books yeah. mostly do. Maybe just black and white, Comic Sans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Histories and Courier do. <laughs> Maybe it's all emoji. Uh, by that point, the future of history. That was really. It's really more about how do we record history now and how will we record history later. So the future of the practice of history. But I also just thought the term was an interesting term. I don't know if anyone would listen to a podcast called that or if anyone would tap on it when they saw that title. We need to be cynical here. Right. This book will be judged by its cover. (laughs) And and if it's in Comic Sans and Courier New, it's not going to get a lot of buyers. Science and history for grown-up smart kids. I really like that. Yeah, we we do like it. It's the one to beat. You know, we have the new mission statement that we came up with to turn explorers into discoverers. We could, you know, we could do something like explorers and discoverers, you know, since discoverers is, is hard to say. Yeah. We could do something around data. What's data? I always hear this word, but I don't know what, <laughs> I really don't understand uh, it. Information, uh, informations, uh, numbers, facts, figures. Yeah, that's data. That's data? Yeah. 
That's good. I mean, here, okay, so here's a couple of uh, titles I riffed on here. Data Discoveries, Data and Culture, Data Science Storytime, Cat Shirt Studios. Ooh, ooh, wait, hold on. What was Data, data Science Storytime? Data Science Storytime. That's that's Because we like stories, but we like science. In a way, Data Science Storytime is the same as Science and History for Grown-Up Smart Kids in that it evokes story time. Right. Oh, story. Oh, this this is so that might be a distillation of the. That was. I mean, that's my job. That's what I was trying to do. So, data science story time. Okay, I like that you that you twigged on that one. I can tell you, so we're in advertising. You you give a pretty good idea, then a few bad ones, and then the one you really want the client to jump on. Well, question is, which one are we on right now? <laughs> I, I mean, you stopped me right before I said <laughs> cat shirt studios. <laughs> so that one's put in so the client feels good about putting a red pen. To draw a line through something and yeah, say, okay, no, you know no, no, all no. my tricks. You know all my tricks. <laughs> well, you know, Cat Shirt Studios, I don't know how to put this to you, Kevin. It sounds terrible. So maybe, <laughs> but maybe we'll go with data science story time. That's pretty good. I like that. All right. Okay, so that's from a ethos wise and also just shelf appeal, curb appeal. Okay. It passes those tests. Now, does it pass the test of your Venn diagrams? I, I can't remember. I think so. Look, let's talk about where we have expertise. I mean, we know a lot about data science. That's we true. work we, at a company that is all about data science. And that's a good point. So, story time, we love telling stories. I tell stories up on stage sometimes, you know, so stories is something that we love. Data is something we think people care about. Stories is something that people like. And data science, which I've always thought is a weird term. Why? And when I say always, I mean for the last few years. Right. Since the term exists. <laughs> well, because it, it implies that there's some kind of science that doesn't use data. <laughs> We've got to be more specific. This is data science, not that science over there with no data. <laughs> like, have, have anybody been in a science lab? There's data. <laughs> I never understood that term, data science. I, I mean, it's buzzy, and maybe we need to use that, you know, because we're cynics here. We're trying to design a title that will trick people into listening. But I would think you would like it because it, it's super meta. I mean, sure, all science uses data, but it might be the science of stegosauruses. You know, it's really talking about the stegosaurus and it's using data to help us understand the stegosaurus. Right. But data science is like the data. It, we're doing the data about the data. You know, we're no sort of. But I mean, in any anything I'm thinking, like as I think about data science story time, a bunch of story potential stories popped in my head, and they're all not about the data. Right? Okay, it's about it's about the stegosaurus, you know, right? How, how I use data science techniques to do wind and solar energy optimization. That's actually energy science, and data is part of it, because data is just part of every science. So even though I kind of take issue with the term, I'm not a prescriptivist, you know, terms are what they are. People use it to mean a certain thing. I just always thought that was odd. I'm like, it's just science. It's just science. It usually just means you, you were trying to do science and your logbook wasn't big enough, so you had to build a bigger logbook. <laughs> so why do you think that, I mean, where, where do you think that term came from then? You say it's only a few years old. Why, like, why does it exist? I think it exists. I don't know. I can't. I can't tell you. I, I wasn't there. I mean, there's. I first heard it from a guy named DJ Patil, who led the data team at LinkedIn, and now, years later, he's the chief data scientist of the White House or of of the of the country or, or something. And he was the first person I heard say data science. Maybe we should ask him. We should get him on this podcast here. Right. Do you mean? Do you think he came up with that term in the similar way that we're having this conversation right now? No, I don't think so. At all. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, he's like, you know, science isn't specific enough. I, I'm only interested in the data kind, <laughs> not that gut science, <laughs> aka not science. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Maybe we should do some googling. Maybe he came up with it. Where did you meet him? I met him. He was he had left LinkedIn and he was working at a venture firm, Battery Ventures, and he gave a talk right when we started this company. Right around it was had to be 2012 because it was when we were just starting this company, and his talk was about data science and. I had followed him on Twitter for a while and seen him talk about data science. and So I heard him, him say this, or I read it somewhere way before I met him. I met him maybe a year later. And I mean, his talk was awesome. I, I, I still remember specific slides from it. <laughs> I think he, and then I was supposed to meet him the next week, and then he had to cancel. And then I met him the following week, and he said, I'm sorry, I just got a call from you know, someone on some giant mountain, and they needed me to come use data science to find a lost kid on a mountain. So I did that, and that's why I had to miss last week. And I was like, that's the best excuse for missing him. You're like a data superhero. He's got stories. We should bring him on here. I like it. Uh, he's, he's in D.C. now, but you know, it's an election year. We'll probably get him at some point. <laughs> do, do, you have any, do you know how he used data science to get the kid off the mountain? I get bullshit about it. I mean, in, 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 vaguely, but no, I don't know. I have no idea. 
<laughs> I mean, I agree. It's the, it's the best excuse yeah, I've ever heard. It's like data forensic, like Dexter. He just came in and he's like, I don't know. I imagine he. I imagine. So here's here's how it went down in my mind when he told me this. Okay, good. I usually don't share in my, what's in my mind. That's directly. what I want. Like you know, he got a text that morning from like I'm going to say the president or something. I was like, it's very important. <laughs> it's an election year because this was 2012. It's an election year, <laughs> so it's it's very important that we save this kid through data. <laughs> Maybe maybe the president said that to one of his advisors, and they're like, "Well, you know, there's this new thing called data science. Maybe we could use some of that to, get, to save this kid." Uh, I'm I must be butchering so I don't even we I must be butchering so many details, even in my my imagined memory. But then like a helicopter picks him up, and, he, and they're like, "I know you've got this meeting with Kyle Wild because we're in your email and everything, and <laughs> and and you gotta you 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 gotta pause that meeting. You gotta kick that to next week. Get in the helicopter, DJ. We we need you. And then he gets in the helicopter." They've got some time to kill, and and they're like, "Well, are you actually a DJ? Because we've got this turntable." He's like, "No, I'm not a DJ. Just give me to the, give me the data." By the time the helicopter lands at Mount St. Helens or wherever this, you know, Mammoth Mountain, wherever it is, he's dug through the data, and the data has stuff like how much gasoline's in all the snowmobiles, and you know, the kind of stuff you'd see in a court case. Like, when's the last time this little, I'm going to say, little girl was seen, and. How many calories had she eaten? How far, how far could she have walked? Maybe that'll help us figure out what radius we should be doing the search in. Or maybe it's actually they've actually done a bunch of searches and he pulled in the data on the search parties and found that there was there were places they had missed. Or maybe he had some telephony data and he was going to do some triangulation on her cell signal before it faded. In what direction was it moving before it faded? These are all things I made up. I didn't actually ask him for the details. Well, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I was I, like, well, yeah, obviously use data to find a kid. So <laughs> back to our meeting. But that's why we call this <laughs> data science story time. <laughs> we have oh. data science and we have stories. Oh, we should just make them up. It could be like a sci fi <laughs> podcast, but we could say it with a certain <laughs> authority. Yeah. So that's kind of what I think in terms of where the term came from. I, you know, I'm pretty sure that the next path to find out, the next step in the path is to ask DJ Patil where the term came from. Maybe he knows. Fast forwarding four years, LinkedIn still has one of the best data science teams in the in the world and is known for it. He's not there anymore, but yeah, they have some enviable talent over there on that team. And I think, and some of the stuff we build at our company is built on one of their technologies. That was all his stuff, so I need to catch up with him anyway. So, anyway, semantics about <laughs> whether data science makes sense as a term aside, I think it makes great sense as a title for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it, it comes back. Um, okay, well, I like that. So, continuing to riff with you here. If we were adding another circle, now that we've mastered the first three circles of the Venn diagram, things we like to talk about, things we have expertise, things people might want to hear about, should there be another circle that relates to Keen? The company, because we both work there? Yes. I mean, we, we want them to pay us for this time. <laughs> I mean, this is, we want it to be work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tech, we want it to be work, right? We want to get paid for it. And I mean, so, Keen is a data science company. Yes. So I think, uh, and you know, we get to choose the guests, which means we could bring in Keen people and Keen customers a little more frequently than we would otherwise do. Yes. To subtly push the message of the company, right? Because we have to be very cynical about this. Like we're we are strategic, calculating people, Kevin. We have to do this with very specific business outcomes in mind. I, I, listen, I mean, <laughs> first of all, of course. Second of, of course. all, I did ask, you know, should we include the fourth circle? We we the first circle, listen. I may be cynical, but the first circle I mentioned is things we like to talk about. <laughs> that will always be my number one circle hmm. is things we like to talk yeah. about. I'm saying should the fourth circle down relate to our cynical interests. Well, let's see. It's data science. It's got you and me. Or whichever one of us can make it a given <laughs> airing or a given recording. We've got you and me, we who work at that company. Yep. We have things people want to listen to, which means this has got a sort of growth mindset inherently. Traction is kind of implicit in the design, right? We want people we want to make something that the people will love. Yeah. Or, or at least I, or at least occasionally retweet. I mean, I entertainment is we want to entertain. We want to inform, but we want to entertain. I want to. I mean, inform is the interesting thing is entertaining is how you inform. The brain becomes more plastic when the attention that entertainment draws out of the brain is focused on something. So right. If we were to inform, well, we could just list a bunch of facts and then no one would listen to it. Or, right, exactly. Or we could entertain and then sprinkle in the in- information, like Full House, right? You think it's just a slapstick comedy, but there's real life lessons, morals of parenthood and family life sprinkled throughout it. 
This is like the Brothers Grimm. We're making the, we're the Brothers Grimm of you know data science. <laughs> I, that could be an alternate <laughs> title, the Brothers Grimm of yeah. data science. Yeah, or the byline, just as the Brothers Grimm. It's like, oh, that's weird. The Brothers Grimm are making that. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. And they work at this Keen company. <laughs> so my, I guess the point I was getting to is the, the first three circles already have so much yes. uh, implicit stuff. I mean, I think... And also, you know, looking around for interesting data science stories, uh, the first group of people I'd turn to would be our coworkers. Totally. Even if I didn't work there, they just have a bunch of interesting data science stories. So I think it'll probably get enough keen value that they'll rubber, rubber stamp it and let us punch our time cards and count this for work. Okay, that's that. I think that's about the right. And level. oh, and I'm the CEO, so I'm pretty sure they'll let us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, that, or they'll cut me and then they'll be like the new CEO doesn't like podcasts I know I mean we, we have a strange organization sometimes you know so <laughs> now there's the whole stuff around entrepreneurship and around like sort of sort of startup life and the sort of our day to day even unrelated to the, the market the technology the customers yeah. and the, and the, but I think we can tell those stories too those are stories they are they're not exactly data science stories all the time they kind of, they can be. We're very I mean, scientific. So. I mean, in as much as they relate to where we work, which has a lot to do with data science. It's true, and the way we work, right? I was thinking, well, yeah, but there's some things. Uh, sure, the, the the product and the market are data science related, but if we were to do something about recruiting, mm-hmm. which is something we think a lot about and f- work really hard on, and do in an interesting way, if we were to talk about that, it's not really related to data science, unless we're recruiting a data scientist, or we use data science in our recruiting, which we actually do quite a bit. So never mind. We do. We do. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we, we need to be cynical about this design here, but we don't need to telegraph it. I, I think you know, even know, though I'm saying it right here on the microphone. I know. But I mean a lot of <laughs> a lot of good designs, you know, part of what you like about them is the dissonance about the edges where it's it's a little hazy. It's a little, you know. Yeah, it's the blurry stuff. It's the blurry stuff. This is American culture. I mean, even our language is just so blurry. I mean, I just think it's pretty awesome that the first story that you Frankly, made up about data science, you know, in, involved saving a kid on a mountain. Oh yeah, and let's I mean, be clear. I'm going to make up pretty much all the ones that I, I'm talking. About. I won't even know I'm making it up. I know. I, I mean, I think even, it's generous. I can't of even you, tell sometimes. It's generous of you to acknowledge that they are false. I mean, I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, and and I want to say, uh, I won't always even acknowledge that they're false. So don't believe anything I say on this. Noted. Uh, <laughs> don't disbelieve it either, out of hand. But you know, you need to evaluate. Everyone, should, all the audience should evaluate. Always think critically. Never believe. At face value, anything you hear, <laughs> aka part of the scientific method, right? So I feel like we're we're as I knew we would be. We're on the same page about this. I think our our three circles, the fourth circle is merely implied. Is there some other fourth circle we should have? Because if we can get to seven, the seventh circle is you know seventh circle of hell. I mean, I, I think that that would not be a great selling point for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. recommend not calling well, no, it. No, it'd the be like it'd be like a Wilco album. It's like really great, and then there's just like a screeching sound, like this hell on earth. <laughs> Good luck editing this out. <laughs> Forget about how you were, you know, riding your bike, and now you heard that. Uh, no, I don't think we should do that. Yeah, is there a fourth circle? Just just to tie a bow on it, is there a fourth circle that okay. we should have? So we've got the marketing appeal of people like to listen to it, the authenticity of we have some expertise, the motivational factor of it's something we like to talk about because if we don't, let's be honest, we're only going to be like three episodes if we don't like it. Well, I, know, I think, I mean, I feel like I enjoy listening to things when people seem to be having fun talking about them. Me too. If they just seem like they're going through the motions, like, well, I guess I have expertise about that, so I guess I could talk about that, yeah. then fine. But I don't want to listen to that. Nobody does. We have these mirror neurons, you know? We listen to something, we start to feel the way they felt when they made it. And if they felt bored, like, oh man, I gotta do this damn podcast again. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna love retweeting. <laughs> so, okay, we've got those three. Is there anything is there anything else? I, I don't know. I guess what gets to me is what about all so we do this, we've got these three circles, we look at the overlap, and now we're thinking, oh, data science data science story time. That's the name, right? Data science that's the one to beat. Data science story time. It's in that circle, for sure. It's in the overlap of those three circles. But what about all the other stuff in the overlap of those three circles? Right? Like you and I have some expertise in linguistics and like to talk about it. Yeah. And people may enjoy listening to it. We had a great conversation yesterday about linguistics. About some kind of word choice thing. I don't remember what it was. 
Oh, bi-weekly. Bi-weekly, yeah, we had a great, yeah, and I was thinking, man, if we ever have a podcast, I didn't know it was the next, if we ever have a podcast, we should talk about bi-weekly and bi-monthly and how those words are meaningless and it doesn't make any sense. I think that we, I think we can throw that in and I'll tell you why. Because think about it this way, you know, 60 Minutes, they have this news show and they cover news stories and then at the end, I mean, I think he's gone now, but Andy Rooney, I mean, they throw in just sort of like the miscellany, you know, and I think I, often the miscellany is, is kind of like the, it's like the seasoning on top, it gives it its spice. Okay, I'll buy I mean, that. I mean, we could do a whole episode of miscellany. I mean, we could do a whole season of miscellany, probably. But I'll buy that. I think that makes sense. I think it should be allowed to digress and have the opportunity to edit it out if the digression, as will often be the case, turns out to be garbage. I concur. Okay, I will buy that. All right, I will. I will buy monthly. <laughs> I think I dreamt about it. They come to think of it, bi bi weekly and bi monthly. What? Who? Who thought of that? What? What was the design of those words? They're so obviously flawed. I mean, just to just for the sake of our imaginary listeners, bi weekly, it can mean twice a week or once every two weeks. Why, why was that word ever allowed to be created? Allowed. Well, that's interesting. That's passive voice. Let's okay. go with active voice. Why did some authority figure allow it to be created? So who's the authority figure? Merriam-Webster? Well, actually, they are complicit. I read their, I looked that up. It says bi-weekly and bi-monthly can mean the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Which is crazy. Yeah, no, Merriam and Webster are both in bed with this whole problem. But yeah. I don't think that Merriam and Webster are on the cutting edge. I don't think, I think they are trailing indicators. I think the dictionary is just trying to catch up with what people are already doing. Well, what doing. about Wiktionary or Urban Dictionary? Those are pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, frankly, I've seen more interesting things in Urban Dictionary than bi-weekly and bi-monthly. I've learned much, much more colorful things. Even just things the, that start with bi. Yeah. Really fascinating. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, yesterday, <laughs> Kyle, you said that bi, bi weekly sounded like a magazine for bisexual people. It is an alternative lifestyle, alternative lifestyles periodical. It's called bi monthly, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, bi weekly, too, because it's like us weekly. Right. I thought it was bi weekly. See, I mean, -weekly, you just can't so get good. away from the problem oh, with it's this. so good. You can't it's get away so from good. the problem. <laughs> you, you have now subscribed to bi weekly, which is a weekly magazine. If you want us to be less frequently in your inbox, you should consider subscribing to Bi Week, Bi Bi Weekly, yeah. <laughs> or Bi Bi Monthly. I feel like what we're doing now. See, I look, I look over Ted, who's you know recording all this for us, and I just feel like, what is he thinking? You know, like is he thinking what did what did I what did I sign myself These up guys for? Guys are fucking idiots. Yeah, I he's thinking I should have taken him up on that beer they offered yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, right now, I feel like what we're trying to do, just to go meta and just try to, like, I feel like we're trying to establish the rapport, the chemistry, the feel, the tone, you know. We've only known each other nine years, so we need to establish it here. We need to, well, we need, you know, we don't always have microphones in front of us and sitting in a room with Ted, you know, like. It's true. So we need to, we need to get that level of comfort. Well, I just, my, my comfort level is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. You know, I think it is within our power to choose an actual topic and really explore it. I, I do think that's within our power. Or we could talk about what process should one follow to choose a topic and be out of time. Right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I mean, just to be clear, I, I know you're like me, Kyle, and Alexa asked in me in some ways, in some way, in, no, but in this way, in 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 some ways, um, but. Alexa asked me, you know, what what is this what's the topic going to be? And I said, well, you know what I kind of picture is that we're going to need to just kind of have a meta episode where we just talk about what should it be called and what kind of thing should it be. Alexa said, what's the point of that? <laughs> and I said, well, it's <laughs> what I think we need to do. She said, I think we should talk about why analytics? Why an API? Why, you know, and I mean, we can get to that. Those are great questions. Yeah, we might get to that. It'll be, but it'll be sprinkled in. Yeah. Right. No, nobody, no kid wants to watch. Oh, here's a sitcom about family values. And more, and I don't mean what the talking point in the political platform. I just mean, you know, when the high violin comes on and Danny Tanner's like, is this is this well known enough that I can actually reference Full House? I'm, Do people know what Full House is? People, I don't know. People, oh, people who are right. right at your age group do. I'm a little too old, but uh, you know, the, but the, I, the, I know there's it. a single violin note. You know, it's like or whatever, and then Danny Tanner's like, you know, Stephanie, sometimes DJ just needs her space. Things like 
little things like that. I learned how to be a human from that show in part. But had they called it, had they put it on ABC Family and said, oh, this is a, you know, how to, how to be in a family show, no one would watch it. No. You know? So we might sprinkle some of that in, but no one will know it's coming and it'll, you know, it'll be like kind of burying a vitamin. It'll be like when they put a little bit of kale in your orange grapefruit banana smoothie with strawberries. And like, oh, it's kale smoothie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got some <laughs> kale today. It's kale and quinoa. I'm going to live forever. And it's mostly apple juice. The apple juice is what gets them drinking the smoothie. So the apple juice. We got to know how to make the apple that. juice. You can always sprinkle some kale in, but if you don't know how yeah. to make the apple juice, uh, you could talk about the API all day long. People aren't obligated to listen. And they're not, And they're, I mean, obligated is interesting. So how do we make them obligated? <laughs> Speaking of being strategic, how do we make them obligated to listen? Nope, can't do that. It's got to be entertaining. Yeah. Okay, so we've done all that. We've had this. We've have. We've, we're in the middle of this meta. Yeah, we're in the middle episode. of the meta. We've we've actually accomplished. It seems to me we've accomplished quite a bit. We've landed on a working title. Uh, I think I I think it's the title. Yeah, I, I mean it's a hard working title. It's like it's, it's hard working. Yeah. <laughs> hard we, working. We're having some fun. Yeah. I mean, I have a list of topics already. I I have a for this title. That will fit with it, sure. So why don't we spend the remainder of the time talking about what episode two, or maybe this is episode zero. That's yeah. you and I are mind meld. I always thought of this as episode zero, hmm. not episode one. I oh, and I always knew I wanted to do an episode zero. I it made no sense to me to start with episode one. I thought, how can you, you know, start with you episode know, our one? Our Myers Briggs are exact inverses. I'm an INTP. You're an ESFJ. Yeah, really, we're weird? exact inverse. Yeah, although in the summertime I, I'm extroverted and a little more feeling than thinking, but we're almost exact opposites. How, how are we mind meld? How's that possible? We must be onto something if we agree. Well, I mean, that's what, what I'm trying what, to say here. Yeah, well, but what about yin and yang? I mean, isn't that a thing? That is a thing. Uh, that's ancient. Yeah, that's mm. more ancient than data science. Data science is like two or three years. Yin and yang is thousands of years. Yeah, it's super old. But so is like don't eat cloven hooved. What you know? That's old too. It's, I thought of that title and crossed it off. <laughs> no offense to anyone who uh, doesn't do that. <laughs> Every week we explore another good reason not to eat <laughs> cloven hoof. Nothing but kale. <laughs> or at least it has to have kale in it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make a 21st generation kosher where you just have to put kale on it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I had a really healthy lunch. <laughs> it was, what did I have? It was a pork, pork belly burger with bacon. And a little kale. Yeah. That's not a great title either. We're going off the tracks. Why don't we use the rest of episode zero trying to figure out what we're going to do for episode one and tee it up? You know, this is the next time. Tune back in a week from now or whatever. You know, I guess this podcast, you can kind of turn them on whenever you want. You're obligated to come back. So, (laughs) (laughs) what what should episode one be? You know, do you want to hear some ideas? Or do you want to just, I don't know. You have ideas. Let's let's do it. What do you got? I mean, if I thought of, Episode zero being the meta, like what is the thing? How should we do the thing? Why does the thing exist? Naval gazing and all naval, that. Naval gazing actually was one of the <laughs> titles for the podcast that I. We are mind melt. Yeah, that I came up with. <laughs> um, I got it from you, but I, I thought it, it did. I mean, it richly describes what we're doing right now. Anyway, I did feel sort of like an origin story. You know, why did you start a company? It's, it's something that I am. Curious about you know for somebody who says I always wanted to write a book called this you know I bet you always wanted to start a company but maybe always that I always that I really always wanted to do that that's that's been a long time so that's that is definitely a story I want us to tell uh, whether it's episode one I don't know but it seems like if there's the circle that is what is your expertise and part of what your expertise is is that you're the CEO of a company like how did you go from not ever having a company to being the CEO of a company that's something that I Frankly, I'm curious about myself and think others. Oh, could. I had a company when I was 11, so I didn't go from not ever. But at 10, I at had 10 not, you yeah, hadn't had true. one. So it's true. I mean, but these are the details that. Well, the, if you go back far enough, we're all made of star particles. So, <laughs> right. I mean, we probably won't go back quite that far. Okay. So that's that is that's something that's a story I would like to hear, and I think that's a story that would make sense to do relatively early on uh, between you and me. What about other ideas? Okay, file that one away. Yeah, they're all. I mean, they're filed here. This is one from our greatest hits. You know, what is the upside of failure? 
uh, talk about a greatest mm-hmm. failure. Talk about you know, let's rekindle that. Uh, that would be another idea that we could do because it's a classic. And then I thought in the yin yang category, what are the downsides of success? You know, what are you know, what's good about failure? What's bad about success? What what are some of the unexpected hardships of success? Was another idea I had. Here's one that you might not want to talk about right now, but what have you learned about pitching investors? How to pitch? <laughs> some expertise, right? Um, I think these are these topics. I know you came up with these topics before we had you know done all of our important work here this afternoon, settling on the framing, right? These topics you really have to squint to make them fit instead of data science storytelling, right? And I know you said the first circle, the number one circle by far is stuff we want to talk about right. any, anyway, but no one would listen to something called stuff two guys you've never met or heard of want to talk about. Uh, so you gotta, we have to I, trick them into listening like yeah. we've been working on. But if I were to subscribe to something called data science storytelling, I don't know if those would make sense as episode. Those might make sense as part of the sprinkling, maybe across an entire season. If you want to hear the story about starting a company and, and why, uh, my story or any, any of, you know, our network stories, we should sprinkle them in. I, th- I don't think that an episode, first episode of Day Science Storytelling is about how I what how to fundraise. <laughs> okay, I, look, you know you can rain on my parade if you want. I'm just I've got, I've got a lot more. Oh, I'm not I've, raining at all. I'm just I'm I, I'm just I'm just criticizing for no reason. Okay, I'm not raining on your parade. That's a metaphor. What I'm actually doing <laughs> is criticizing your ideas. I'm not raining on your parade. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the accumulation of moisture in the cloud layer. I can't rain. <laughs> what I can do is criticize your ideas. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's two. There's two sides. So, of, can you, as you skim through your list, oh, go ahead. There's two sides of the coin. There's we we found a title that we kind of like, but on the other hand, like what stories we want to tell? Do we have enough stories there? And are these stories that we would ever want to tell? You know, it's true that a lot of the topics that came to me were sort of areas that we had looked at for the blog and things like that. So, it would be safe to say. That pure data science stories might be a little limiting unless we interpret it as we choose. And I frankly think that interpreting it as we choose isn't such a bad thing to do. I, mm-hmm. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to is Planet Money. Do you ever listen to Planet Money? I do. And uh, how often are they really talking about money? You know, they often go very adjacent or, I mean, Sort of money, sort of economics, but it's really sort of whatever they want to talk about. I mean, they. No, it's true. There's sort of, I mean, the, the, the cover of a book is about getting you to open it. A, does it get enough people to open it that they're going to, you know, tweet wildly and share and give us all sorts of free promotion and ego points and all kinds of all that? We'll make our Twitter bio for the podcast and we'll get a million followers and all that. But also, once they open the book, is the cover so misleading that they don't. They detracted the wrong group of those people, mm-hmm. right? So we we can make a podcast called "The End of Religion," and people would probably follow it. If we're not actually talking about that, they'll be like, "What? The, what is this podcast?" Right. Well, I mean, the end of religion started stuff. before this podcast began. That's why we never talk about religion or how it ended. <laughs> See that? That's kind of, that's controversial. If you said that, <laughs> that would actually fit in 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 the title, right? One of my I, so have you ever read this book or heard of this book by Tim Ferriss called "The Four Hour Work Week"? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Uh, the Four Hour Work Week is one of maybe fifty or or a hundred concepts in the book. The book should be called A Whole Bunch of Ideas from Tim Ferriss. Some of which are great, some of which are just reprehensible, and one of which is Four Hour Work Week. But another of his topics was how to name something, and he's like, oh, I just I put up a Google ad pay a, a, a bunch of Google ads and picked a bunch of titles I had in my mind, and I saw which one people clicked on the most, and then I named my book that, and I tricked you into reading it by naming my book The Four Hour Work Week, which is not really about it's got that's one of the topics. <laughs> So it should be called a bunch of ideas from Tim Ferriss, and some of them are good. One of them is four hour work week, but it's like four percent of the book. But he named it very, very cynically and strategically to make it into a bestseller, which I thought was brilliant. And also, you you respect the gamesmanship. Yeah, I do. So maybe we should do it that way. I think data science story time would get a lot of people to check it out. But we don't want to hit them. We don't want to hit them over the head with this. Isn't what you thought you were signing up for first? We want to do it in episode like four. I think we need. We would need a few good ideas on tap that. Are kind of on the straight and narrow. They kind of you think you're getting what you asked for. Okay, you know what I mean. What's so great about analytics? Well, that's interesting. That sounds like it's in the in the nature of data science story time, does it not? It, oh, it definitely does. 
I mean, in a way, those are the two origin stories. The, the two origin stories, one is why start a, a company, period. But another is, if you're going to start a company, you could start it for lots of things. You could start it for a new type of pizza delivery, you know, but instead, analytics. That's riffable. I think why? We, that's a way to frame it. I see what you're doing. You're taking taking the same concept and just thinking about different titles for it. That, well, no, not and, necessarily. And no, no, no. I mean, I, I actually think, I genuinely think there are two related stories. One of them is why why be an entrepreneur? Why start a company? Why why not just ride on someone else's train? Why why make your own train? Fuck those other trains, Kevin. Well, I understand. I, only, I know, but train. I want you to riff on fuck those other trains. <laughs> this for train like rules an episode, but. <laughs> So, because I, I think my guess, knowing you, is that there are two threads here. One thread is why do I want to have a company? Period. Why do I want to start a company? And another thread is what kind of company do I want to start? I bet you thought I want to start a company before you thought I want to start a company that makes analytics. Oh yeah, exactly. Now, in chronological order, the why do I want to start a company at all comes first in your life and. Why am I going to choose analytics as the thing? Come second, but maybe mm. in the context of data science story time, why analytics? Why am I jazzed about analytics? Why do I think mm-hmm. analytics is cool? Comes first, and then okay, let's go back even further. Let's take the time machine and and see how did we even get to the point of choosing a thing? That's interesting. It's sort of in medias res. It's interesting. I have a sense of. It puts me in my life and career thus far very much in the spotlight in the, for the first episode, and I, I don't. I'd much rather slowly eke out pieces of the spotlight over many seasons. I think, but I don't know. I think I, this makes. I think this makes complete sense, and we're, we are you and I are very on the same page that this could make some, make a lot of sense. To choose a first episode, I think we want to capture. It's very theoretical. It doesn't sound like a, it's story time. Like, it is a little bit, but it's a, the thing is, if I'm the, if I'm the special guest on, epi- on the episode one, it's not going to really be story time. I, I'm not a great story time guy. I'm much more of a I disagree theory time. Uh, <laughs> I can go theory time all day long. I'll, I'll talk about analytics and theory. I mean, when we did that discussion and later made a blog post about oh, but you failure. are a storyteller supreme. Actually, I, I, I see you can pull the story. I help and make it I, make sense. Uh, didn't I help you? Like, I mean, that was a great story that came out of there. I didn't I say very great. much, but I prompted once or twice to. That oh, was great. I, it was great because afterwards, all the reasons. That's when we realized all the th- all the reasons I don't write blog posts or give enough talks, and they're all the reasons you don't. We compliment each other in that way, right? No, we do compliment. I yeah. mean, it's yin yang. That's yeah. what's going on here. Yeah. So that that's that's viable. An interesting consideration might be to bring in another founder to talk about that. Someone who also started something in the data science world or analytics world, as a way to divert the attention away from me, so that I, I don't can, want so that to I can divert the attention away from you. <laughs> and obviously, I'm making that pretty clear. I'm going to be blunt. I think my gut tells me because you and I we've had a lot of conversations over the years. I think a lot of people can be involved in this project and should be, and I want them to be. But the reason that you and I are sitting here together for episode zero is because there's. No single other person that I think is as well suited to be in the duo of people who kind of help create the momentum of the thing. Hmm, suffice it to say, I as well am very picky. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So, to me, therefore, it seems like if we're going to try to create the momentum of the thing, and if we already have good chemistry together and we have demonstrated that. Then I think we should try to find some things to talk about when we're establishing product viability, where we create some of that momentum before we bring in another person that we don't have as much. Now, I'm not talking, I mean, we have obviously there's people that we know super well, your co founders and other friends who, who could come in, but I, and I understand why you say you want to deflect the spotlight away from yourself, but well, I want to, yeah, I, I want to. Push it back onto you because well, one thing that was possible is instead of being a co-host, I could just be a special guest, and you can be the host. And from that lens, yes, I think I should be the host. Oh, maybe we should do it that way. I think you should. There are many shows that have a host and a very frequent guest, but mm. the role is still that that person is a very frequent guest, and that I think probably. 
would work well if technically I'm the host, which means, you know. Which uh, means, I, oh, I'm just here as a guest. Why am I helping you design this? You know what? Guest. I like guest. Let's edit out all of me talking in this one so that we, we make people think that I'm just a guest. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think you're overcorrecting now. I think oh, you're, fair I enough. Think, I think you're overcorrecting. I mean, the, a podcast that I think about that has sort of that format is Freakonomics. Do you ever listen to Freakonomics? I do. Yeah. And so there's Stephen J. Dubner Dubner and Levitt. Levitt. And Levitt, Levitt is yeah. the real, is the dorky like professor, and Dubner is sort of the journalist. The journalist. And wait, wait a minute. I'll, what are you implying? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I chose my words unstrategically. <laughs> Nonetheless, I, I think even though they both are in most episodes, you get the sense that. Dubner is really the one who's sort of the host. And when he's going to go out in the field and interview other people, he's going to be likely the one who's going to go interview other people when there's, and there often are other people. Nonetheless, Levitt is very, is an anchor tenant. You know, he is there Mm -hmm. in most episodes and they have a special rapport. But if there are going to be interviews with other people, it's going to be Dubner who's probably going to be the host of those conversations. And the onus will be taken off Levitt, who you can tell doesn't really want to do that. And among Dubner's duties is to uh, try to pin down Levitt once in a while. Le- yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it, it took you months to pin me down for this. So yeah. clearly, if you were required to pin me down and a guest who may be even more dorky professor like, and in, it should be more dorky professor like many times, how can you pin both of us down? That's never going to happen. Right. That sounds terrible, Kevin. You. Why don't we just make you the host? Okay, I uh, accepted. I'm the host, <laughs> but I would like you to be my. I mean, you are way more charismatic than Levitt, and yet he's. I mean, you even know. I mean, we all know who he is. I I appreciate that. I do. I do agree. I'm probably more charismatic than Levitt. Perhaps a, a smidge less professorly <laughs> because he's Levitt. I read everything that guy writes. He's brilliant. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's incredible. Or he did, probably doesn't even write most of it. <laughs> it seems like maybe he just has a beer and talks and, and disappears. And Dubner writes of it. Even their first book together was. They're still monetizing that book through a podcast called Freakonomics Podcast. Yeah, I I've never even read the book. I just oh, listened to the podcast. Well, speaking of data science story time, there are a lot of things in the book. Oh yeah, and of course the podcast. I mean, they really are. There's a lot of data science. They could actually call it data science story time, but it's too bad. Trademarked Kevin Wafsey data science <laughs> yeah, story time. Yeah, exactly. I good mean, luck. Free, Freakonomics is pretty good too. Um, it's pretty good. Data science is so interesting. Economics is a data science. Actuary is a data science. Physics is a data science. <laughs> so I so it was one thing for episode one. I don't think I'll come on and just shit on the title of your show. Okay. But if you ask me to, I will riff on that. Assuming we'll edit out any of the riffing here. <laughs> uh, yeah. What exactly will happen with episode zero? I don't know. That's why zero. I mean zero in many mathematical computations voids the entire. Equation exactly, uh, but I think there we could zero it out. We could, we but no, we want, we've got to save it. I mean, I think there could be bits here that that could be sprinkled in later. I think that it would be hard for a listener to listen to episode zero as their first experience with us. Yeah, it might be kind of like the B sides. You kind of go if you if you like it, you go back to the creation of exactly. You know, I, I think to me, gazing. to me. If I could make an analogy to what it is, you know, we do at work, where we let people track a bunch of data that they might need later, you know, hmm. this is like data that we might need later. We don't necessarily need it right this second. So get some traction, and then announcing episode zero. Right, exactly. You you, the you thought you were here you since loved the beginning. It in the theaters. You thought you were here since the beginning. Go before the beginning. Do you want to hear what there was before the beginning? Before the Big Bang. Hmm. Before they got that record deal, they actually did a, a not super well known album. They released on cassette, and guess what? It's in iTunes now. Right. Buy it now. For the band Sublime, that album is called 40 Ounce of Freedom. Nobody knew about it. And then all the fans, okay, so we really announcing episode zero, the making up. You enjoyed it in the theaters. Now get the director comments right. on DVD and give us $12 more or, because or however many dollars. I think it takes a certain degree of arrogance, and I have this degree. Oh, me too, whatever you're about to say. To be, to be so fantasizing about future success that you fantasize people will want to know 
what was the birth of the idea that grew to be so compelling? We better save it now so that people can access it later. I yeah, I possess the same trait. Yeah. I mean, delusions of grandeur. I think is what it's called, and it's paid off for me. It's paid off with, for me with your help. I mean, I perform in Mortified. You're the one who found that show for me. My teenage journals that I kept because I thought they were going to be necessary someday. I was right. You were right. Delu- this is the thing about delusions of grandeur. They they can be self fulfilling. Yeah. Think. Most of the time, they're not. <laughs> right. There's not enough grandeur to go around. But well, but luckily, uh, <laughs> I have enough delusions of grandeur that if even only a few of them pay off, it was worth the investment. No, that makes that makes sense. So we haven't really come to a conclusion on episode no, we one, but, but, but the thing is, we part. don't have to come to a conclusion on episode one. You're the host, boss. If you'd like me to be on as a guest, I'll think about it. I'll probably be on as a guest. Oh. I mean, I'm not going to be Andy Richter. I'm not going to be on every show, but not the host. That sounds terrible. Yeah, no, I don't want you on every show. And Andy Richter, I mean, that's a different role. Um, no, that's not that, that's not <laughs> the role at all. Uh, I'm not going to be Max Weinberg. In the Max Weinberg oh. Seven. <laughs> Speaking of things, people from the '90s know. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I really do think the Dubner and Levitt thing pays off. Oh, I like the Levitt. Yeah, I Levitt, like that. Levitt is where the expertise is. Without Levitt, there's no meat on the bone. I mean, Dubner is just a clown, really. I mean, he's just there, like. I mean, he's. I like clowns. I hear you fishing for compliments there, Kevin. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give into that. Okay, that's fine. No, but I mean, my my. I'm I'm just I'm just giving you a compliment purely. Like <laughs> I. I I can't do a show, Data Science Storytime, without access to a Levitt, you know, and... You have, you have access to tons of them. I have loads of Levitts, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm happy to be Levitt primary. Yeah, exactly, Levitt you number get, one. You should get Mr. Larimer on this show. Yeah, oh, for sure. That guy's a Levitt. Uh, we got a bunch of those. I think that makes sense. So, and you know, if, if you do decide that episode one makes sense, maybe just don't tell me that's going to be episode one. I mean, that's, you can figure that out in post, I... I yeah, I it's don't, a, it's a big think, it's a big burden to oh, bear. Oh no, it's too much of a burden. And my feeling is, since there have to be three before we even launch, we can always switch the order. So I I think it's too much pressure to to say this is for sure episode one. It's too much pressure. That's my my feeling. It's an early episode is to me. The I right do have point. a concept. Okay, it's based on a pun, and I sometimes go pun first and then try to fill in the details. But the idea is. The data of followership. So this is like Twitter followers, Instagram followers, the following of a digital brand or person. You know, the marketing platform for the Ashton Kutcher, right? The, the digital followership and how hard it is to do the data science around it, which is actually it's quite hard. And the idea is that you could call this episode one the fandom menace. Uh, I, l- <laughs> I, I know. gotta go. I like it. I like it. Okay, episode zero complete. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking with us all the way. This one's all through. If you'd like to join us on a future show, or if you have a question you'd like us to noodle on, let us know. You can find us on Twitter at DS Storytime, or join us on Slack at slack.keen.io. To learn more about Heavybit, visit heavybit.com. And check out their library while you're there. It's full of talks, podcasts, and articles designed to help you take your developer product to market. 